The AFK collection stemmed from a personal interest in Malaysian contemporary art and has grown into a comprehensive collection spanning the history of the entire movement. Can you describe this transition from collecting for a personal collection to accumulating what is now described as the country's foremost repository for contemporary art? I think it can best be described by understanding that it was a collection in transition. It began from a passion for collecting art, which then subsequently led to understanding the importance of the narrative of the art movement itself. In this case, uh, we had a th thematic direction towards the collection in wanting to collect contemporary art. So we realised the importance of understanding the narrative of the contemporary art movement. Um, by, by in doing that, we spent time with the academics and the intellectuals of that period. Um, I, I would say people like um, Hasnul Jamal Saidon, people like Shushilawati Suleiman, who were the curators of that period. And through understanding from them the historical development, we then understood um, the relevance of the critical artists within that period. That led to a greater enthusiasm for the collecting of the art itself. So the collection then started developing a narrative in line with the national, national historical development of the contemporary movement. So through time, the importance of the narrative took a very dominant stand on the collection of the AFK collection, and the collection grew, very, grew in size as a result of that. Um, after a period of time, we, we, we realised that it literally represented the, the national collection or what a national collection should be. So this was something that happened in stages from, as I said, from the enthusiasm of collecting to understand the importance of that period, to understand the importance of the narrative, and then realising that that was not being done by the corporate collections, by the institutional collections. And that realisation drove us to collect in a, a far more serious manner than we had originally intended to. You have said that the AFK collection stems from what you term the failed curatorial process. Can you describe what this means and how you have overcome this through the collection? It was a very bold statement to, to, have, to have made during that period. Um, the statement stemmed from the fact that there was a lack of understanding of the development of the contemporary period itself. There, there was a burgeoning contemporary movement. There were a lot of young artists, mid-age mid, mid artists, who were coming into the fore. And we were seeing the, the development of the mixed media movement, the installation movement. There was this whole new, new um, introduction of art forms within the art movement that I think the curator of, the pe of that period struggled to to adjust to. And they came up with a thesis that this was a movement towards um, Isl Islamization of Malaysian society, instead of realizing that it was the development of the contemporary movement, that the introduction of mixed media, the introduction of, of abstract expressionism, the introduction of, of conceptual art, was not in fact, as they declared, a movement away from figurative art, but it was an expansion of within the art movement itself. So there was an attempt to, to suppress the development of the contemporary art by, by way of um, not providing it with the patronage that they needed because of the lack of the understanding. So while the corporate and institutional uh, collections of that period remain focused within the modernist period, um, it, the priority fell on the private sector the private collectors to lend patronage and to lend very strong patronage to sustain the contemporary movement and to see it develop further. So it was an exciting period for that time because on one hand it was a direction by the private sector, on the other hand there was a lack of understanding from the more established institutional and, cor and corporate entities that existed at that time. And it was, the, the excitement was further added by the fact that the 90s and noughties were a very important critical period of Malaysia's development. 
that there was a very strong shift from, from the rural agrarian society into an industrial banking financial service center that Malaysia was fast developing into. That the internet was being introduced, we had the new airport, we had the north-south highway. So the, the entire country was going through a, a shift in movement and you could see that similarly while there were there were movement against this um, major development within the society because it was changing society. The, there, were, there were political ramifications and there were cultural ramifications. Within the arts, they tried to keep it back to what they knew within the modernist period. Whereas there was a younger generation, there was a cry from the younger generation to be heard and through the arts, it was being expressed through the contemporary movement. So we, we, we interpreted it as a sign of a failed curatorial process that the curators of the period, the institutions of the period could not adjust to the new realities and that it needed new people, new collectors, uh, a whole new mindset towards the development of the art uh, movement itself. So it's something we participated in strongly and we realised the need for patronage, that the artists needed the patronage and patronage helps produce good art. If the patronage was not available at that time, I think the movement could have been, could have stumbled. You could know? have stumbled and a lot of critical work could have been lost because you know one of the big problems artists have is of storage. Especially artists who are producing large installations, they couldn't keep them, you know. So uh, it just, um, we thought we had to collect them. So we preserved them for history for the coming generations of Malaysians and we you know provide provide an umbrella where they are all housed together and people are able to come in look at the work see where the movement started tra trace back the history of Malaysia's contemporary development as well through the arts um, it is very reflective in the art of that period so yeah I think the um, so I think it was a very important role that the AFK played during that period of the late noughties and uh, the, the late 90s and the noughties to help in the development of the contemporary movement. You began collecting contemporary art at a time when the focus by most other collectors was still very much on the modernist art movement. What inspired that approach for you? I think one um, incident really sticks in my mind. We, were, we went to see the uh, Philip Morris uh, exhibition which was held at the old Balai National Gallery which was still at the which is what is now the Majestic Hotel and I remember going in there and looking at all this work and the work that won that year was Ahmad Shukri's Diskit series and I had never in my life seen an installation and I was so excited it felt so exciting and my heart was beating faster and I wanted to know more about it and about the artist and this was because I only knew art as a painting you know I only knew the traditional so that made it more exciting and as we started going to galleries and we it was always we were shown we were shown modernist works and they were by established artists and they were good works but what really got us interested and would make us excited were always, always, always contemporary works, mixed media works or maybe even installations because earlier on um, we were not, uh, because we were just starting so we didn't buy installations but we were excited by them. So we would always look at the work and then we say okay what is this, what has other works the artist has done. So it always came back to contemporary artists that got us more and more and more interested. So that's how. It just, it, it kind of started happening naturally and then the desire and then all the research and um, looking at the narrative and developing the narrative, it was the contemporary period. I think it's important to realise what a strong modernist movement existed at that time, literally to the detriment of the contemporary movement. Because uh, the support and patronage was towards the modernists and they were producing reprints of paddy fields, reprints of older imagery, where society itself was going through major shifts. Um, it was the industrialization and modernization there was period. The Twin, Towers. the Twin Towers had come up. Yes. You know? So that, wh while that major change was going on, there was a major demographic shift where the rural people were now moving into urban centres. So the face of the urban, uh, urban centres was also changing. You had this tonnage of, of rural and rural people who are coming in, bringing younger generation people with them, 
who were then um, beginning to make their presence within the environment known. So it's a question of sticking with how it always was or responding to these new changes that was going on. The new changes to us was best described by KLCC, was by the advent of the North-South Highway, which made our travelling easier, with, uh, with the introduction of the new airport, the development of KL Central uh, Astro, train system, internet, Astro. I mean, you know, so it was an yeah. exciting time, and we struggled to be boring during that exciting period. Yeah. And we, we wanted to, it was, the, you see, contemporary art is about your present. And we wanted to collect our present. We didn't want, we, and that present, because we had made it Malaysia our home. So we wanted to know more about this home that we had adopted to live in. And we wanted to know what was driving Malaysia to this extent. Because within that 10 year from the first time I visited KL to the 90s and when we moved here, there was a huge difference just in KL. You know, I remember coming here and not being able to buy a cappuccino. And then suddenly there were cafes, there was, you know, everything that you would in expect a in a contemporary modern city was available and it was a very short period of time and we found that we needed to the best way to capture that moment was to follow because our interest was in art so to follow the contemporary movement because that was Malaysia because that reflected the changes that was going on within the environment yeah. what is the focus of the AFK collection I think the focus of the AFK collection um, one is to identify the relevant and important artists from the contemporary period, especially that we were at the face of the first generation development of, of, of the contemporary art. And also to include in that was to understand the different subsectors and different genres of art development that was occurring at that time. We, we had to look at mixed media, we had to look at installation, we had to look at abstract expressionism. There were so many different subsectors and we had then identify who was dominant within those subsectors. And after we had done that, then there was a question of then providing patronage, financial support. And these things are best done through acquisition. Best way to support art is to buy art. Everything else is relevant and important, but a major chunk of budgets should always go into that itself, the acquisition of the artworks. From that, then we then expand it further by doing research and publications by doing exhibitions to create an awareness for the greater society. So it always requires people who have knowledge of a certain field to then share that knowledge with the rest of society itself. So right now for us, our focus is how do we help to develop the knowledge through research, through publications, to provide patronage by way of acquisition and financial support, and then to help to spread the word out as much as far as possible that we, we, we are able to.